This is going to be the first in a series of uh, tutorials, recorded lectures, to explain uh, and also show you how to add the code for the exercise called box height. So what I have here is the uh, index.html that you're going to download. Now what you're going to download, uh, it will be a zip and it's going to be called uh, box height student and once you unzip it it's going to have the following uh, files the index which is what i have open linked to it is a style sheet style.css and also linked to it is a javascript um, and what we're going to do is look at what makes it uh, look the way it looks right now oh and there's also an images folder with like three images uh, like all of them kind of square fruit 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 um, let's see what it has now Right now, it's an HTML file that has eight boxes. It has a container, it has a header, it has inside like the main, it has eight boxes and each box has a picture, a heading, I think it's H2, and a bunch of paragraphs. Some of them more, some of them less. Some of them have more content, some of them have less, some of them more, some of them have really less in other words they don't all have the same height the aim of this is that eventually what we're going to have is uh, adjust both the css and the javascript to do these two things to make those eight boxes first of all line up side by side but also make sure that they're always the same height and not just the same height not a fixed height, but the height of whoever is the tallest one. So it's enough for whoever is the tallest box. And when we adjust the size of this, it's going to be responsive. And for instance, on narrower screens, it's going to put only two side by side, but still it's going to make all the boxes equal. So there's enough with, you know, a little margin for each one of the boxes to be as tall as the tallest one. The tallest one um, is uh, determining the height of all of them. Let me demonstrate because I have the final one already open. If one of the boxes had a ton more content, let's say box one, instead of one paragraph or like, you know, or three short paragraphs, it had a lot, then box one, refresh, would be the one that determines the height for everyone else. It's the tallest one. It sets the bar for everyone else. Let me undo this because I don't need it to be that tall. And let's start going over the code. At first, we're going to go over uh, the code that exists right now. So I'm going back to what you guys are going to download. I'm doing this in uh, Dreamweaver. Of course, you can do it in any code editor that you want. Uh, in the HTML, of course, there's head. This is the char set, which means, you know, it'll support all the alphabets in the world. Uh, the title is box heights. And then we have this line called the viewport line. The viewport line, which is something you just uh, write as entirely on every page in a website is to basically force mobile devices to report their true widths so later on we could do media queries and ask the device oh how wide are you and if you're wider or narrower than a certain amount to serve you with different css styles for example in the finished one in the CSS, there are at the end media queries. So it's asking, hey, media only and screen max width 900. It's like asking, hey, device, are you um, less than 900? The only way the device will answer truthfully is if we got this line in the beginning of the HTML, we go back to this one, which is the, uh, the viewport line. Content equals uh, width inside the, uh, the quotes width equals device dash width comma initial scale 1.0 name viewport and this will force smaller devices to report their true width 
After that, there's a link to an external style sheet, which is called Style. Now on Dreamweaver, it just opens them in you know different tabs. On other code editors, you might have to open them separately, but here's the CSS. It already has some stuff. We're gonna add more to it. Um, and after that, there's a script, which is really a link to an external library called jQuery. And the reason that we're going to be using jQuery, jQuery is a library of JavaScript. And the reason we usually use it is two reasons. Reason number one is because it makes writing JavaScript shorter, the syntax is shorter. And the other reason is because it has predefined functions that we could just piggyback on, that we just, just take advantage of, that if we had to write it on our own, um, it would take us pages and pages. And then after the link, this is an external link, uh, in a different lesson I will show you how to um, find that link if you don't have that line. But right now it's uh, Google, who is uh, Google IPS, who's hosting it for us this uh, library so it brings it in and after that a link to our own script called boxes.js a very imp important principle whenever you're using an external library first must come the link to the library and then the script that uses it it makes sense um you know what in a, in two seconds i'll show you how you get this link if you just go to any browser and you just search for J query C D N con content uh, distribution network. Actually, and I'm going to write Google because there's plenty of places that do that. Here it is hosted library by Google developers. And actually the example they use is jQuery because it's the most used library. So what I did is simply copy this script right here from the script tag all the way to here now right now the latest version of jquery is 3.6.3 uh, when i wrote the code it was 3.4 either one of them would work anything higher than three would work you know what let me copy this and go into my code and paste and we'll see if it still works chances are that it's still uh will oh okay i have an extra closing here that i don't need that's it one opening one closing and that's the end of the head in the body itself there's a div id container which is basically the whole page it starts right after the body and it's the last one to close right before the end of the body so this is end container um it's very easy to see the container once we style it because the container is everything that's read. This is whole thing. It's supposed to hold the content, but sometimes some people have really large uh, screens or high uh, resolution screens and we don't want the text to like smear all over the width. We want to be contained inside a certain width. Most websites do that. Um, if we look at the style for that container here it is the style for the container is an id so if we look at the css uh it has you know a few google fonts that i imported that is a separate tutorial it has the same reset that we've used in uh, previous uh, exercises for the body i did nothing but assign a general font and a gray background so the gray background is what we see outside here, that's the gray background. And here that brings us to that container. Pound container, that means the ID container. What am I doing to it? I'm saying your maximum width will be 1200, which means you will be 1200 pixels if the viewport allows you to. And if it doesn't, it's going to just be as wide as it can. So it's 1200 right now from here to here, but if the viewport was narrower, it would be 100% of whatever width I'm giving it. If the viewport is wider than 1200, it's going to be only 1200. And this is part of making it um, responsive. Um, 
its position is going to be relative. Now, if you remember, one of the reasons that we make something position relative is so we can make other elements inside it position absolute. I'm not even sure I'm doing it in this exercise, but it's always a good practice. It becomes a qualified parent for other element inside it that might be position absolute. Margin zero auto, we've seen, that's a way to center it. Here's the uh, background, the red. And at the bottom, I gave it padding just so it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Just, you know, so it stays always like, you know, a few pixels. Here's the 10 pixels padding from the bottom. So the boxes don't go all the way to the bottom. Um, and that is the container. Then in the container, there's a header. And in the header, just an H1. So there are very simple styles for it, for the container, header, a background color that is just a slightly lighter red and some padding. And for the H1 in the container, it's going to be white. It's going to be using one of my Google fonts. Here's a size and a little bit of text shadow. This is how much vertically it, the shadow will be offset. This is how much uh, horizontally, and this is the blur around it. This is the color. So zero zero basic means that basically means that the shadow will be evenly around all the letters, which means it's going to look like this. Here's the shadow. See how it's evenly around all the letters. Uh, this is just an ornament, just decorative. We don't really need that. So this is the header, and this is the shadow. It's not part of the functionality just you know something i threw in then the most important style the most important style are those boxes so inside each after the header we got div so if we explain box one all the others have the same structure we have div it has a class now why not an id because a class is when we want to use it multiple times i'm saying well all those boxes will share the same look so i'm giving it the class my box let me start a new line here what's inside each box an image which takes its image from the images folder in this case fruit one an alt uh, attribute you know for search engines um and then an h2 and a number of paragraphs, end div. So this is one box. All the other boxes have exactly the same um, style or exactly the same uh, structure. It has the opening with a class. It has an image, an H2, and then a bunch of paragraphs. Now, the way it looks right now, let's open it right now. The way it looks like now is this is the generic look of one box. Here's the div. Here's the image, here's the uh, H2, and here's the, uh, the paragraphs. Let's see what it has right now. And that's the style, sorry, called sty uh, in style CSS, the style called my box. The background color is that light gray that it has. The border radius is the little slight rounding of the corners. Um, Its width right now is fixed. This is one of the first things that we're going to change. And then margin 1% and padding 1% means that out of the width of the whole viewport, it's going to have, wrong page, it's going to have a little bit of padding on the inside and a little bit of margin on the, in, on the outside. Notice that when the uh, container gets narrower, 1% of less is one is less. So it gets a little more cramped. So this is why I didn't make it in pixels. So when there's enough room, there's a bigger margin and a bigger padding. And when there's not enough room, it gets narrower. But our main problem is two things. Number one, the boxes are fixed width. So I don't know how many of them will fit side by side. And they are one above each other. So let's fix both. What we're going to do is replace some of the code here. And I'm going to borrow the code from the finished one. First of all, here is what we're going to do to it. We're going to actually um, add these lines. I'm going to copy them. And the code that we have, we have width for uh, 400 pixels. We're going to get rid of that. Instead, we're going to write float column 
left and the width will be 23 percent we're moving to percentage instead of fixed pixels let's talk about the percentage first i want to have four of them in a row now you might think hey four of them in a row why not 25 percent right that's a quarter and that but that's because of the margin the margin is all around so what does that mean that it has one percent on the left one percent on the right plus 23 makes 25. if i made this 25 you won't be able to fit four of them what float left does is make sure that those um, boxes appear next uh, appear next to each other. So when I refresh, oh, I need to save first. And I refresh. Now those boxes are not going to be 400 and one above each other. They're going to be 24% of each one of those and side by side now notice that some things kind of uh you know got screwed up for instance the boxes don't have the same height yet and also the uh red background from um of the container is gone why because when we float we have to terminate the float it doesn't know when it thinks that the container ends here so let's take care of that what i have in the source code is after the end of the last box, what we're going to add, and I'm going to use the example from here, what we're going to add after the end of um, the last box and div, yeah, this is the div for this and let me make sure Yes, good. So this is going to take care of itself when we uh, finish with the JavaScript. Save. Next, let's look at what else we got here. Uh, in the styles, so once we take care of the box, let me just make sure that the style is exactly the same for my box yep one two three four five six lines in the finished example and one two three four five six lines good um the box h2 has a font it's like the h2 inside the box it has a font and then it has a transform translate was a transform translate it's moving it if this line did not exist It would look something like this see where it puts the um where it puts it i wanted to move up so i did transform translate let me actually open it in um in chrome and i think it would look better in chrome uh where's my class let me open yeah this is the student one nope not in firefox in chrome yes um i want to move this to be inside the picture and therefore that's the reason that i had transform translate negative means go up if i change this to 60 and refreshed it could go further up. In this case, I could just adjust the number until it looks like it's exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna return it to 30, because 30 looked good to me. Uh, the letters themselves have a color, which is white. It has this text shadow that I used before, and text align center. Remember, we uh, center boxes with uh, margin zero auto, but text center, we could just center with text. Then there's a style for each one of the paragraphs inside the box, just a font uh, size. And for the image inside each one of them, it's 100%. Now remember, percentage is always of the parent. Who's the parent of the image? My box. So it's going to be 100% of the box, but it's basically 100% of how much the box will allow it to be. Why? Because the box has 1% padding on the inside. So it will allow it to be as big as it can be with 
See, this is the padding on the inside. So the image is not as big as the box. It's as big as the uh, available room in the box. If I made that image, just let's play around with the numbers. If I made that image not 100%, but 50%, it would be half the width of its parent, which is the box. It would look something like this which some people might say, hey, that's kind of cool. Why is it not centered? Because we never told this image to be centered. We told the text to center, but we never told the image to center. I don't want it to center. I want it to be as big as the available room here. And this is the end of the uh, CSS that we have already. So at this point, I will stop this part of the tutorial. In the next part of the tutorial, what we're going to do is take care of the JavaScript that makes all those boxes equal.